What do you think of when you hear terms like machine learning or artificial intelligence? Well, I happen to know just the right person to help us. Hey Siri, what is machine learning? Machine learning is the scientific study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to perform a specific task Okay, enough, task enough, enough, enough of that, enough of that. But actually, that was a very precise answer to my question. Just way too technical for this talk. Highly intelligent machine learning algorithms are getting most of the media coverage these days. For example, self-driving cars or virtual assistants, just like Siri over here. This evening, though, I'm going to show you a completely different type of machine learning. Instead of focusing on the most intelligent algorithms, I'm going to show you the power of keeping things small and simple. Did you ever try calling Siri when your phone wasn't connected to the internet? Well, here's what happens. Hey Siri, what is machine learning? Siri doesn't work without internet connection. And the reason it won't work is because our, our phones do not have the raw computing power required for advanced natural language processing. In other words, our phones are simply way too slow for performing such calculations. All of our Hey Siri requests are actually processed in a huge data center online by Apple. If you try to run Siri offline on your phone, it would be extremely slow and it would drain your batteries, probably within minutes. At the same time, our human brains seem to be way ahead of supercomputers at such tasks. We don't struggle answering simple questions, and we can even deal with much more complicated ones. The big question now is, can we make computers as energy efficient as human brains? Even better, what if we could create algorithms which work in the same way the human brain does? Well, it turns out we can do it at least in some applications. But it is not based on neural networks, as some of you might speculate. I started working on a project to address this question last year at the University of California in San Diego in a group of Professor Tyna Rosing. Our goal was to create an algorithm which works in, the same way, in a similar way the human brain does. So we wanted to create an algorithm which could perform machine learning offline on small scale, sometimes even battery-powered devices. For example, cell phones, smartwatches, or even TVs, blenders, vacuum cleaners, you name it. Can anyone, without using a calculator, tell me what the first five decimals are of square root of 17? I don't think anybody here can do it. But a simple calculator can do this within split seconds. How is this possible if our brains are supposedly so much more advanced than the most powerful supercomputer? This is because our brains are not evolutionary made to calculate with numbers. Numbers are not natural to our brains. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, our ancestors' survival didn't depend on their ability to solve compl complicated numerical problems with high accuracy. Their survival depended on their ability to hunt, to make quick, intuitive decisions based on what they observed and heard, and also the ability to do advanced math wasn't exactly helpful in attracting females. I guess it hasn't really changed. <laughs> but you know, as they say, smart is the new sexy. So I guess I can still pass. Therefore, we need to create machine learning algorithms which don't rely on mathematics in the same way other algorithms do. So how do we do this? We do it by recognizing patterns. Together with my colleagues at UC San Diego, we managed to create an incredibly energy efficient algorithm which can per perform machine learning offline on small scale battery powered devices. We call it hyperdimensional computing or HD computing. The basic idea is this. We give the computer a bunch of training or learning data, for example, pictures of cats and dogs from the internet, which you can see on the top, and then the algorithm learns like a little child. So, it takes these pictures, these images, encodes them using some random numbers, and converts them into patterns. So we have one pattern representing dogs, and one pattern representing cats. Very simple. Now, when we give the computer a new, unknown image, like the one in the bottom, it is also converted into a pattern, and then the algorithm simply checks if it is closer to the pattern of a dog or a cat. 
And in this particular case, it is going to tell us that it's a super cute little puppy. And of course it is, it's my family's dog, Milky. You might be asking yourself now, what is this all good for? Why can't we just connect to the internet and run algorithms the same way Siri does? To answer this question, I'm going to show you a project created by the Berkeley Wireless Research Center. Here, you can see a man using hand gestures to control a prosthetic arm. He has a small chip, sorry, a small detector attached to his right arm, just over here, you can see it to the right of me. And this, this chip measures electric impulses from his nervous system. Now, those impulses are then transmitted to a chip, which uses machine learning, HD computing to be precise, to predict which next move his arm is going to make. That information is then passed along to the prosthetic arm, which you can see on the right, which just then gets into this position. Now, here's the trick. If that man didn't have the bottom half of his arm, if the bottom half of his arm was missing, the detector would still be able to tell which, which move his arm would make if it was there. And in the case of a disabled person, that prosthetic arm is then attached to his body. That way, he or she can use a prosthetic arm as if it was a real and almost fully functional arm. It sounds amazing, right? So let us watch this in action. Pay close attention to the fingers of the man and to the fingers of the prosthetic arm. This is, of course, just an early prototype developed at Berkeley, but it is still a remarkable proof of concept. We want such prosthetic limbs to work reliably and without requiring constant internet connection. Why? Well, just imagine a man with a prosthetic leg crossing a large street and then suddenly stopping in the middle of it. Then a police officer comes over and starts yelling at him to get off the street because of all the incoming traffic. The man's response would be, well, I'm really sorry, officer, but my leg just lost internet connection. Maybe you could share me a mobile hotspot for a second? Obviously, such things don't work without efficient offline processing. And also, we don't want live data of our bodies in the hands of large international corporations, right? I would like you to leave today remembering that artificial intelligence and machine learning are not just about making computers more intelligent than humans. There's so much potential in equipping small-scale, battery-powered devices with machine learning algorithms. As Professor Jan Rabai from Berkeley said, artificial intelligence is one of the most profound steps in the evolution of humankind. AI will help us adapt to the rapidly changing environment around us. In some way, it will help humanity cope with the smart world that is emerging as we speak. In conclusion, by embracing artificial intelligence, we empower positive change for society. Thank you very much.